Hello and welcome back to Best Bets. What's going on? I am Matt O'Leary alongside Newsday's Joe Maniello. Joe, how's it going? Doing pretty good. You had a great week last week. Four and two. We picked six games, 31, 25, and one. My season from hell continues. One and five again this week, 18, 39, and one. So hopefully looking for a big week to bounce back with uh, Thanksgiving. Yeah, I'm with you, too. I'm going to take the Bears minus three and battle of the backup quarterbacks. Uh, right, and right now, I think Andy Dalton's the better of the two quarterbacks. And I think the Bears defense has actually played pretty good, especially against the pass. So I just don't see the Lions being able to score very much. I'm um, thinking like, I don't know, 20 to 13 kind of game, low scoring, uh, kind of a, a sloppy one to get us started here on Thanksgiving. OK, there you go. Uh, as for the second game, Cowboys are hosting the Raiders. Cowboys are favored by a touchdown and a half, seven and a half. So who do you like here? Okay, there we go. I'm going to take the Cowboys as well here at uh, minus seven and a half. Um, I also agree. I kind of like that they're coming off a loss here against the uh, against the Chiefs last week. And the offense really didn't play that well. They were the number one scoring offense in football. Uh, now that dropped them down a couple of spots after only putting up nine. But I think that kind of motivates them this week. And the Raiders, it kind of just feels like their season's going off the rails. Over the last three weeks, they really haven't put up much points offensively over the over these three losses in a row and it was they've lost five of their last seven so I, I think the Cowboys win maybe about 10 14 point range something like 30 to 20 something like that uh, but usually the Cowboys on Thanksgiving are pretty safe bet let's get to the final game on Thanksgiving the Bills and the Saints uh, the Bills are favored here by six who do you like here yeah the, the line was four and a half yesterday and then I checked later tonight and went up to six I'm not really sure what happened I guess a lot of money came in on uh, Buffalo, but uh, I like the Saints here. I don't think uh, – I mean, that means that if the game was in Buffalo, they'd be favored by 11, 12 points. Uh, I don't get it. Uh, Buffalo was everyone's, you know, preseason Super Bowl pick. Not, not ours, but mm-hmm. everyone loved Buffalo this year. I actually picked the Pats to win the AFC East. I kind of took a shot thinking that Buffalo could take a, a minor step back. But they haven't beaten one team with uh, – only one, they've beaten one team with a 500, over 500 record. And I think that's when the Chiefs weren't, weren't even 500, but they're over 500 now. Uh, they got crushed last week at home against the Colts. Two weeks before that, they lost at Jacksonville. I mean, something's not right with them. Uh, you know, the, a lot of people say, oh, this is a bounce back game for them. But the Saints, they've lost three in a row. They're a desperate team at home. If Alvin, Alvin Kamara not playing is huge, I don't know if he's going to play or not, but I'm still going to take the six points. I think it's way too many points. I think the defense uh, comes through for the Saints here. And it's the close game. Uh, I got it. Buffalo 26, New Orleans 24. And I wouldn't be shocked if the Saints won. I don't think Buffalo is uh, as great as everyone thinks they are. So I think the spread is off. So I like I like the Saints. Plus. Okay. I'm going to go with Buffalo this week. And the six number scares me a little bit. But reason why I'm going with Buffalo is, I, to me, I like their defense going up against the New Orleans Saints in a backup quarterback with potentially not having Alvin Kamara, who's you know their best offensive weapon. Uh, outside of last week where they gave up 45, they've been excellent defensively and, and not allowing a ton of points. So I, I think it's more on the Bills' defense in, in winning this game than it will be their offense bouncing back, although I do think they perform you know better than what they did last week, only putting up 15 against Indianapolis. Uh, I, I think they're better than how they've been playing over the last three, four weeks or so, especially. Um, and the Saints, uh, they're just a hard team to figure out. They're at 500 right now. They started the season a little bit better than you know where they are now, and obviously losing their, their quarterback uh, really – hurts their playoff chances but uh, I like Buffalo on the road here I'm going to take them minus six Uh, let's get to locals the Giants are hosting the Philadelphia Eagles Eagles are favored by three and a half how about this one yeah the spread scares me a little bit three and a half I wish it was two and a half because I I think it could be a three-point finish Uh, I was tempted to take the Giants there you know off a bad loss they fired Garrett you see the situation in the past and teams usually respond but I just can't do it The, the Eagles are playing really well right now uh, they changed their offense around and more run heavy offense now. Jalen Hurts is playing great, and the Giants. I I got to see them the offense get it together for a week before I go back to back. And then I was picking them consistently for a while. But um, the Eagles, they're uh, they finally get they finally got a road a uh, home win. They were 0 4, but they they're pretty played pretty well on the road. Four and two on the road, and 
they've owned the series in the last uh, decade or so, but so many different moving pieces. I don't put too much into that. But I, I just don't. The Giants right now, I know there's so much negativity around that team. If, if they come out, you know, and they win, it wouldn't shock me because it's the NFL. But the Eagles are playing so well right now. I think they can, uh, you know, sometimes you get caught up on the whole, you, you focus too much on the spread. Like, you know, if you think a team's going to win, there's a good chance they're going to win by more than three. They, you know, they win by four, five, six, seven. So the whole idea, oh, it's three, three and a half. Oh, I, I got to get to three and a half. Sometimes that makes sense. But this one, I, I'm just going to roll the dice here with this team that's playing much better right now. And the Eagles, Eagles are hot off a nice win at home against New Orleans. And uh, they've been really good on the road. So I'm going to go with the better team here. Eagles, uh, Let's call it like 28-20. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of in that same boat score-wise, too, in this one. I'm also taking the Eagles. And one, they've been really good on the road this year, the road warriors. Giants haven't been that great at home outside of their win against the uh, Raiders before the bye. But I I just don't trust the Giants right now. I, I really don't. I know they moved on from Jason Garrett. I just don't know how much of a difference it's going to make here. Uh, I think they're kind of just riding out the season before they, you know, make some of their much needed changes there. Uh, and the Eagles, they're they're just playing really good right now. And it does scare me a little with it being three and a half as opposed to either two and a half or three. But kind of as you said, if you think the team's going to win outright, you might as well just take them and hope that they win by that four to six range. I think it's exactly. probably like a 26 20 kind of game you know they win by maybe a touchdown the eagles do but they're just the, they're the better team right now they're playing well i don't think we should overthink it here yeah uh as for the jets they are traveling to houston to take on the texans texans are favored in this one by two and a half how about here this is not the greatest matchup but i i, tweet, I tweeted this last week i'm putting it in my column i'm going to mention it here too because i want everyone to hear it. if you if you met someone who has never ever seen the nfl before never watched the game and you try to convince them how unpredictable the league is. Tell them that Tennessee, eight and three Tennessee, which had just beaten, which has beaten seven playoff teams from last year, two of its losses are against the Jets and the Texans. I mean, that just shows you how crazy, crazy this league is. It's hard to predict. Uh, the Texans are finally favored for the first time, I think, all season. Yeah, because remember week yeah. one they were uh, at home against Jacksonville. It's the first time they've been favored all year. And I like the Jets. I, I, I think the Texans are, I mean, the Jets thing, but I think the Texans are way worse. Uh, the coach, Dave, uh, Cully, I don't know, David Cully, I think his name, I don't yeah. know his full name. He, uh, last year, I couldn't, uh, last week, I couldn't believe I, I was watching the Red Zone. Last week, he challenged the play. That was his first challenge all season. <laughs> and that, that's, uh, that's crazy to me. I mean, I know that they're yeah. not in many games, so it's hard to figure why challenge, but how could you not have, how could there not have been one situation in the first 10 games, nine games that you didn't challenge? That, that's mind boggling to me. And, uh, I think the Jets get a little boost here from Zach Wilson. Everyone's down on the kid because he hasn't been playing that great and then uh, got injured and the Mike White phenomenon. I think uh, he's going to have a nice game here. And the Jets, to me, they're the better team top to bottom. I like uh, coaches better, and I just think they're the better team. I mean, it's, it's a rare instance when you can say that, but I think the Jets win the game outright, so two and a half points. Uh, Jets get their first road win of the year. Let's call it uh, 24-16. Okay, there we go. I'm with you. I'm taking the Jets as well. I'm I agree. I think Zach Wilson comes back and plays well. The Jets offense, they've been putting up a, a ton of yards week over week. Joe Flacco threw for 290 last week. Mike White had the 400 yard game. Even Josh Johnson came in and played relatively well against the Colts. I think ever since Mike LaFleur has gone up and started coaching uh, or calling plays rather from the booth that it really turned the offense around. And, you know, we know the defense isn't any good. They've had their issues, but offensively, the Texans have struggled. It's been an up and down year. Uh, mostly down year for them other than just this surprising win and their win in week one. Um, I, I think people are too high on the Texans after their, you know, again, the upset win over the Titans. It was great for them, but I don't see them doing it in back-to-back -back weeks. Uh, I think this is a situation where uh, Wilson comes back and puts up maybe his best game of the season. Uh, I'm going to take them um, 30 to 17. They win. Okay. Well. As for our game of the week, we have the Packers and the Rams. The Packers are favored by just a point. Uh, who do you like in this game? Yeah, it's a great game. Um, we talk about it sometimes, you know, Aaron Rodgers, whenever the spread's like three, you got to take him. But I like the Rams actually a lot in this game. Uh, they're off a bye, and they've lost two in a row before the bye. But I like the idea of them coming in, not, you know, not, you know, with a big, you know, motivation to get back on track here. But the biggest reason I like them is that the um, Packers are really banged up. They lost their offensive linemen. Uh, they might be down two offensive linemen, I think. And 
Rodgers has a toe issue. I mean, Stafford is also a little banged up, but I'm sure he's going to play. And I just like – I'm a big uh, Sean McVay fan. I like the idea of them off a bye. And I don't see how the Packers uh, slow down Aaron Donald and Von Miller and that pass rush angry team that wants to get back on track here. Uh, Packers at home, always a safe bet, especially when it's get, with it getting colder, L.A., West Coast team, but I don't think that matters. Uh, I think the Rams come in and play, play with the purpose. And uh, I don't think it'll be a – I don't – you know, obviously not going to be a blowout. It's going to be a close game. But I think the Rams kind of win uh, convincingly here. Well, not convincingly, but, you know, they don't – they win by, you know, four to seven here. I think the Rams are uh, both of us picking the win the Super Bowl, and I'm not going to back off just because they've, they're a rough patch here. I think, you know, I like the idea of two weeks off to prepare, especially for a quarterback like Aaron Rodgers. And the fact that they've lost they uh, lost the home to the Titans, and then they lost at the, at the 49ers, and both games are basically blowouts. So another reason why I like them here, I think they get back on track and uh, win something like uh, 27-20. Okay. So Rams. I'm going to go with the Packers this week. I, I like the points you brought up for the Rams, and I'm not you know, backing off of my Super Bowl prediction with the Rams yet. I just The Packers have been good, so good to us this year. Um, I, I think they continue that this week. Uh, the Rams, even just before the bye, they weren't playing well, obviously, as they lost a couple of games in a row. Uh, whereas you know, Green Bay, I think they're getting into a groove a little bit, and I know Rodgers is a little bit banged up, but... Uh, for me right now, I just trust Green Bay a little bit more. We'll see if that changes this week. It would be a you know big win for the Rams to you know get back on track here if they were able to win it. But I I have a hard time going against the Packers right now because they've just they've been good to us all year long. So I'm not going to change that right now. They weren't good to you last week. <laughs> no, <laughs> that is that is true. So we will see. Best bet. What do you got for us, Joe? Uh, well, my first thought was the Patriots against the Titans. I think the Patriots are. Uh the way they're playing, but the line moved too much. It went from like two and a half to six and a half. So I think they'll still win and cover, but I don't like it as much. So uh, a couple other games I like my underdog pick, which we'll get to in a, in a minute or two, but I'm going to go with the Steelers here. Uh, they were good to me last week. They covered, even though they were down 27-10 entering the fourth quarter, they battled back, almost won the game. And they're getting four and a half here at the Bengals. Is that right? Yep, four and a half. All right, so the Bengals, I picked, they were actually in my lock of the week last week, the Bengals. So going like anti-reverse lock here. It's going to be a little bit of a mind game. But um, the Steelers, they've owned the series. Uh, Roethlisberger, all-time 24-9 against the Bengals. And the uh, Cincinnati hasn't swept the season series since 2009. They won in week three, 24-10 at Pittsburgh. I like the Bengals I like the Bengals that week. But uh, this week, I like the Steelers a lot. These games are usually close. And the Steelers, they're a resilient team. I think Mike Tomlin's an underrated coach. As, I think the Bengals, uh, you know, they got back on track last week at, at the Raiders. But that was a close game. The final score was 32-13, I think. But it was 13-10 in the third quarter. And they had like a couple of late touchdowns that made it look uh, a little, little misleading, the final score. So I think this is a three point game either way, maybe a four point game. So I love them getting four and a half. The Steelers are a little bit banged up, but uh, as they showed last week, they played to the final final down here. So I think it'll be a, cr- a close game, division rivalry. I actually think the Steelers are going to win the game. So as we always talk about, it, when, you get, when you're getting points and you think a team's going to win, it's an obvious uh, bet. So I like the Steelers a lot this week. I'll call it uh, 20 to. 20 to 17 Steelers. Okay. For me, I'm going to go with the Ravens minus three and a half over Cleveland. I just think Cleveland is reeling right now. They barely skated by against the uh, Detroit Lions. And I, lo- I know Lamar Jackson didn't play last week, but I'd expect him to you know come back and play against the Cleveland Browns this week. And I was surprised to see the number this low. I thought the Ravens would be favored by more than three and a half. I think they win by seven to 10 points. I really don't think Cleveland's playing good at all right now. Um, Obviously as they've kind of fallen out of it here, Uh, we were both high on them at the beginning of the year. Um, Baltimore's kind of proved that they're, you know, the better team. Uh, And I definitely think they're better coach. So I I like them to win, call it 24, 17, something like that. Yeah. I like the Ravens too. Uh, How about that underdog you like so much? Yeah. The Vikings, uh, they've been good to me this year. The last few weeks, uh, I think they're a really good team. So, so much of the Colts, the Vikings, they're like they're five and five, but they're much better than that record to me. A couple things went their way late in the game, they'd be seven and three. So I think they're at getting three and a half now. Is it at at, at, at the Niners? Um, is it three and a half or three? Um, no, yeah, three. three. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a three. Uh, and same situation as Pittsburgh. I like them to win the game. I think Minnesota's a better team. San Francisco. Uh, both teams are back to back wins to get to five hundred. So this is this is a huge game. Could mean a difference in a wild card spot in the uh, 
competitive N- NFC here. But I think the Vikings are a better team. Kirk Cousins has arguably the best one-two punch at receiver in the NFL with Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson, who had two touchdowns last week against the Packers. Huge win for them, 34-31. I think it's the kind of win. And the week before, they won at the Chargers. So a huge win out west, come home, beat the rival Packers, go back out west. I think the team has uh, tons of confidence here. And the Niners, you know, I picked them when they beat the Rams a couple weeks ago. I thought I was proud of that pick. But um, last week, I went back and took the Jaguars mistakenly. But I think people are putting too much into that win. I mean, it was against the Jaguars. So I don't think the Niners all of a sudden, everything's solved. They're also 2-11 um, and 11 in the last 13 at home. So I feel like there's no home and field edge at all for the Niners. And I think the Vikings are just a better team. A few weeks ago, um, Colt McCoy in Arizona looked them up. So I think Kirk Cousins does the same thing here. And uh, I'll call it 34-27 Vikings. Win outright and uh, keep going toward that playoff spot. Okay. For my underdog, I'm going with the Seattle Seahawks plus one over Washington. Now, Washington's won a couple of games here, and Seattle hasn't been good, but I don't think Washington's as good as what they've been been playing recently. Um, So I I think this is one where uh, I was almost surprised to see uh, the spread at just a point, Um, and I think that kind of tells you something, that Seattle's going to win this one outright. Uh, Russell Wilson's going to be due. Uh, and Washington, Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I know, I know you hate that word, Joe, but I, I feel it. Uh, Washington's defense uh, has been streaky this year. They played well against Tampa Bay, but uh, I think the Seattle offense puts up some points uh, this week against them. I'm going to say 27-20 Seahawks win. Yeah, I actually like Washington in that game, but I don't love it. But uh, the line did actually open Seattle, I think, minus three. And then after the way they looked and the way that Washington played, it went down. So it went, you know, Washington's favored by one, so. The thing is, like, like you said, a lot of people love Russell Wilson, so the public loves him. That's why, that's why the line isn't higher, I think. But Washington played really well. I mean, they have two back-to-back compressive wins, so I think you might be surprised if that's what. All right. We will obviously see next week. Let's <laughs> run through. Let's run through these real quick. we got a ton of games. So for the three Thanksgiving games, both on the Bears at minus three, both on the Cowboys minus seven and a half. I like the Bills minus six, and Joe likes the Saints plus six. Eagles versus Giants, both on the Eagles, minus three and a half. Both like the Jets, plus two and a half. Our game of the week is between the Packers and Rams. Joe is on the Rams, plus one. I like the Packers, minus one. Best bet, he's going Steelers, plus four and a half over Cincy. I like the Ravens, minus three and a half over Cleveland. Underdog pick, Joe is on Vikings, plus three over San Fran. And I like the Seahawks, plus one against Washington. Joe, thank you so much for coming on, and hopefully you and your family have a nice, happy Thanksgiving. You too, man. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you.